Hi, and welcome to episode 87 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy, and I am coming to you from eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, February 21st, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. I really appreciate you joining me and I hope that you enjoy this episode. This is a podcast all about my crafty life and today I have crocheting and knitting to share with you all. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts and you can also get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. Today I am wearing my Fanfare cardigan that I knitted last year, and it is a vintage pattern that I knit from a vintage uh, pattern book that I got on Etsy, and it is designed by Hand Knits by Beehive. And I knit it out of my own hand dyed yarn in my humble colorway. I am currently hosting a make-along over on Instagram, and it is called the Make9 2020 Mal, and it is for anyone to join in on the Make9 Challenge, which is where you choose nine patterns that you would like to make within the year of 2020. Make a grid of those nine patterns um, and post that grid to Instagram with the hashtag Make9 2020 Mal. And then throughout the year, you can continue to work on those projects and post progress pictures as well as finished object pictures in order to enter in that make along. Any craft is allowed and encouraged and whips are allowed and encouraged. And yeah, the really the only requirement is that you make a board and enter with that hashtag so that I can see that you want to join in. And then other than that, you know, every time you post a picture, of course, put the hashtag on there so I can see what you're doing. But then you don't you don't have to do anything beyond that. You don't have to finish any projects. You do not have to finish all nine projects because of course so many of us change our minds throughout the year and decide to make other projects. So it's just for fun, just to try to get an idea of what kinds of things you are hoping to make this year, but it's not set in stone by any means. Please make what you want to make. There is no requirement. So it's just an encouraging way for us to try to check off the things that we would like to make this year. So I hope that you will join us um, in that make along. I am so, I'm so excited to see all of the different people that have been joining in that make along. And it's not too late if you would like to join in. We're gonna be doing the make along all year long. So if you wanna join in, go ahead and make a grid and post it on Instagram. And yeah, I would just love to see the things that you are hoping to make this year. I have a few finished objects to share with you all this week. The first one is my first finished object from my Make Nine list. These are the Francis socks, which is a beautiful pattern by Emily Clausen, who is, um, she dyes the Yarnbrary yarn, and I actually used her hand dyed yarn for this project. This is on her classic sock base, which is a 7525 merino wool nylon blend fingering weight yarn and the colorway is called snowflakes and emily is also part of the meanwhile at the castle podcast and i just really enjoyed making these socks the simple texture um, i just think is so lovely and i really like how they worked up with this yarn as well So I made the second size, which is a 64 stitch count. The ribbing is a one by one twisted ribbing. And then I knit an extra long leg as per usual for my preference for socks. I like a longer leg. It has a heel flap, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And um, a standard rounded toe, I believe. Um, So yeah, these are, so great. Actually, the the picture that I posted on my Make Nine list was for her Aria socks because this pattern had not yet been released, but I had noted on my Make Nine, um, you know, board that I really wanted to make her newest pattern, which was this Francis sock pattern. And yeah, so super, super happy to have these done. And yeah, I'm so thrilled to 
be on my way to getting through my personal Make 9 projects. If you've tuned in before, you know that I made two boards for my Make 9 challenge just because I wanted to. <laughs> um, I made a board showing the personal projects that I wanted to make and then I made a second board for gift knits that I wanted to make this year. So anyway, I'm so glad to have one of the projects for myself completed. I really, really enjoyed this pattern and highly recommend it. It was easily memorizable and I just really love, this is the perfect combo for me. A simple texture is my favorite for socks. I don't really, I hardly ever make vanilla, just plain stockinette socks. Um, I just get bored with that and I just like a bit of texture in my socks, but I don't, I like it when it's simple, but um, you know, easily memorizable. So it's, this was just a six row repeat, but really it was, you're just alternating stitches every three rows. And so it wasn't um, difficult to memorize at all. I really, really enjoyed it. And I was able to finish another pair of socks. And here they are. I am so happy with these as well. I really, really, really enjoyed this sock pattern as well. This was a test knit that I was able to do for Kay, the crazy sock lady, or she's known as the crazy sock lady on Instagram and has crazy sock lady designs and has the crazy, crazy sock lady podcast as well. And this is one of her new patterns that has not yet been released. It's called Sweet Tart Socks. And I used my own hand dyed yarn for this. This is my Discover colorway on my um, Gold Stellina base. So it is a fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% Gold Stellina. These are a gift for my friend Tina. Um, she actually had purchased, I believe, or maybe I gifted it to her. I can't, I think she purchased this yarn from me and then gave it back to me to have me make her socks out of it. So she had held on to it for a while just because she enjoyed looking at the hank of yarn. But then after I made her a pair of socks again at Christmas time, she gave me some more of her yarn that she had on hand for me to make her some more socks, which I'm so happy to do. She and I wear the same shoe size, so it's super easy to make her socks because I can just try them on myself and make them to fit me and they fit her perfectly as well. So this again is a one by one twisted rib for um, the cuff. And then I'll take them off of the sock blocker so you can see the beautiful pattern that runs down the front of the sock. It's a very beautiful cabled, well, I don't know if it's technically a cable or not. There's this, K includes a tutorial that shows you how to do the cable-y looking stitch and it's so fun. I really, really enjoyed it. There's a couple of stitches. There's one stitch in here that was also in her Follow Your Path socks that I have done a couple of times and love. So I love that stitch. And then there's this other new stitch that she includes in this pattern that is really, really fun to make. So I enjoyed making these so quickly. I made them in one week exactly. I cast them on the last time I recorded a podcast, I cast them on that evening and then finished them a week later exactly. So, oh, I love them so much. Um, let's see, I did, I followed the pattern exactly. It was a test knit, of course, so I didn't want to vary from the pattern, but I mean, Kate, typically has a little bit of a longer leg than a lot of other patterns, a lot of other people, a lot of other sock designers. I mean, typically this is the link that she designs and I really like that. Um, so I followed the pattern exactly. She also had a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I did try a new technique for the SSK stitch, so slip slip knit. I typically have a really hard time, maybe I can show you on this sock because I did not do it on this sock. I have a hard time getting my SSK stitches to be tight enough. So here you can see those stitches are really nice and tight and those would be the knit two togethers. But then on this side, these are the slip slip knit stitches and you can see that they're just looser. So I looked online to see if I could find a technique to help me get those SSK stitches to be a bit tighter. And I found an awesome tutorial by Patty Lyons and it is called the One Move SSK. 
and it's super simple but very effective and I was able to get these stitches to be a lot tighter. Here, I'll show you on the one on the blocker so that it's the same. So let's see if I can compare that. Um, so it's this side. So here they are, and you can see that they are a bit tighter. I don't think they're still quite as tight as the knit two togethers, but they are better. You can kind of see that, I think that this sock, these stitches are just a bit tighter here. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, that worked out really well, I think. So yeah, these, uh, same thing, rounded toe for these. I loved making them. I will definitely make this pattern again because it is so enjoyable. I highly recommend it. Um, this test knit was supposed to be done by the end of February. So I assume that Kay will have the pattern out at the beginning of March. And I highly recommend it for anybody that wants to give, you know, textured socks a try. Um, yeah, I just love them so much. This was only a four row repeat. So again, very, very easy to memorize. Super fun. Love them. Yeah. I have a few other finished objects. If you've tuned in before, you know that I've been trying to knit through my cotton stash making dishcloths. And so I have six more completed. These are, the majority of these are in Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton yarn. And um, they, I use the free pattern that I have found online called Grandmother's Favorite Dishcloth. I will link to that in the description box below. There is not a designer for this pattern, however. I do modify my um, dishcloths in that I increase to 52 stitches instead of only increasing to 44 stitches as the pattern calls for before I decrease. I use a US 6 um, 4 millimeter needle for these. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that for my socks, I use a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle for both of those. Um, this is in the colorway Aqua. I have two in the taupe colorway, two in the monkey brown colorway, which I really love. It is, um, you know, kind of marled white and brown together. Although this colorway is a bit more, has a higher tendency to split, I think because of the way that those strands are um, wound together, but it's okay. I did have a couple of spots where I, it split and I had to go uh, pick up stitches a little bit, but I really, I really love the look of this yarn. And then that is all of my, I love this cotton that I have on hand as far as full skeins. I do have some scraps that I could possibly make a few that are striped or something, but I don't have any more full skeins left of the, I love this cotton. I did make one in Knit Picks Dishy in the Honeydew colorway. And I am, uh, I've got enough to make one more out of the honeydew colorway. And then I've only got two more skeins of cotton yarn in my stash, two more Knit Picks Dishy colorways. And then I don't have any more cotton in my stash. So that's incredible. But I have a lot of dishcloths stored up now for gifts. So that's super fun. And my last finished objects are these very, very cute kitchen Tool Kitchen Scrubbies. The white one is a little bit harder to show off with the bright colors. But anyway, um, I have really, really loved making these. I was inspired by Natalie, who is known as Nitty Natty. And she put out a tutorial here on YouTube on her channel, which you can find at Nitty Natty. I will link to this below as well. Um, she put out a tutorial of how to make these Tool Kitchen Scrubbies super super simple pattern and you use three inch tool here is a roll of it that i picked up at hobby lobby um so it's already pre-cut uh, to the three inch size and you just do three rounds of simple crochet circle uh, the tool is you know, it does take a bit of adjusting to get used to working with the tool because it is a thicker um, material. Here's one that's unwound. So you can kind of see 
you just kind of gather it together like this to work it, but it sticks to my fingers. I'm finding myself, I have to kind of adjust my uh, tension, my the grip that I have on the on the tool as I'm knit, as I'm crocheting. Almost every stitch, I'm kind of adjusting my fingers. So it is a bit um, difficult to get used to that process. And I found that when I was going from, when I was switching from crocheting with the tool to crocheting with merino wool, for example, it took me some adjusting to get used to the difference in tension or the difference that it felt in my hand. But anyway, they're so fun to work up. They work up, work up super quickly. Okay, the first few that I made, I was able to find at Hobby Lobby. They didn't have a huge variety of colors available in the three inch tool. They had white, so I have two of white. They had red, I have two of those. And then I was able to make one um, with two rounds of the white and one round of the red, using up the last bits of those colors. And then um, I made two of this pretty blue color. And I had enough scraps left over to make this scrappy one. So those were the first few that I made. And I loved them so much that I wanted to go back to Hobby Lobby and get some more tulle. But they, like I said, they didn't have a huge variety of colors. So they had these three colors, red, white, and blue. And then they had pink and black in the three inch tulle. And I really wanted some more variety in the colors and they had tons of variety of colors in the six inch width of tool. So I picked up a few different um, colors in the six inch and then I just used a box cutter to cut them in half. So this one came in a six inch tube like this and I just took a box cutter and cut through it which was a little tricky. I mean, I had to go around the roll a few times to get through all the layers. Um, but I was able to successfully cut them in half. The problem with this though, is that it sheds a lot more. So as I'm crocheting them, my lap gets pretty much covered, even right now holding this, my lap is covered with tiny little pieces of this stuff that's coming off. And I almost kind of feel like I'm breathing it in because I kind of, once I make one using this kind that's been cut, I kind of like feel like I have to cough and <laughs> so I don't know. I'm afraid that I'm like inhaling tiny particles of nylon, which I don't suppose is a very good thing. So I don't know. I'm a little bit uh, leery <laughs> of making too many, but I do want to use up what I got. I forget how many colors I got. I got ivory, which I'll show you. I made up five of this ivory color, which I really love. It has kind of a pearl essence to it. You can't probably see that very well. But anyway, they're super, <clears throat> even now. <laughs> I need a drink of water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I really like this color and I like the beautiful sheen that this colorway for this, this color has. So I've got five of those. And then I had enough to make another half and half one. So I made two rounds with the cream color, the ivory color, and then one round with the green, light green color. Anyway, so I got the ivory, the green, I got a like a seafoam blue, a navy blue, and a light gray in the six inch. So I have quite a bit of it that I've already cut in half to use up, but I'm gonna try to not do them um, a lot. Like I said, I just don't want to be breathing in this stuff. Maybe I should like put a mask on before I crochet these. Anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, they are 100% nylon. Some of the rolls say 100% polyester. It's probably about the same thing. I don't feel much of a difference between the two. Yeah, super cheap. They were on 50% off at Hobby Lobby when I went shopping on Tuesday. So all their tool was 50% off. So that was great. Yeah, so I have a total of eight, 14 altogether of those little tool scrubbies. So I'm super excited to try those out in my kitchen as well as being able to gift those to people as well because I think they would be well received. And as you know, I love gift knitting. <laughs> so anyway, I'm excited about that 
like I said, they're super fun to make. Oh, I used the recommended the recommended hook size that Natalie recommends, which is a J six millimeter crochet hook. All right, so those are all of my finished objects. On to my works in progress. My first work in progress is the Raouli shawl by Marie Amelie. And this is the fourth project off of my gift list, my Make Nine gift list. I am knitting this for a friend that I go to church with. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's so incredible. You can see the stitch marker here is marking where I was last time I recorded, which was exactly two weeks ago. So that's not very impressive, is it? <laughs> It is a bit slow going, um, you know, brioche, it's all over brioche and that is a bit slower since you have to work each row twice with each color. But it is just so beautiful, the design. So I don't mind, it is just gonna be a slow process making this project. I'm using the recommended needles, which are US 6 4 millimeter needles. All of the needles that I use are Chow Gu Red Lace. I am using my own hand dyed yarn in my Honest colorway and Night, which is just a solid black. And I'm really enjoying it, but yeah, it is definitely a so slow process. I feel like I've worked on this a lot since I recorded last, but there's just not a lot of length or yeah, there's not a lot of length there to show for my efforts, I don't think, but it's okay. It is a work of art, I feel like. This pattern is just so, so fun to make, just to see it appear before my eyes. I'm really, really happy with it. So pretty. So yeah, not much to say about that. It's going well, I'm liking it, but it's slow, but that's okay. I was hoping to get this done in the cold winter months, but it probably won't be done until it is, you know, spring. That's okay. Hopefully she will enjoy it for many years to come. But I did kind of pick these colors to go along with her coat, her winter coat, but I think they're neutral enough that she'll be able to wear it in, you know, even as a spring shawl or anything like, something like that. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with how that's coming along, but slowly but surely it is coming along. <laughs> My next work in progress is being held in this big basket that I love, and it is another gift knit shawl for another friend that I go to church with. Tina again, <laughs> the same lady that I made the socks for. And I am making the Night Shift Shawl, which is a beautiful pattern by Andrea Mowry. I am adjusting the pattern in that instead of using worsted weight, I am using two strands of fingering weight held together. And I'm just kind of changing colors as I want, as I like. I'm not really following the pattern for color changing so much. I mean, I kind of am, but then I'm kind of not. <laughs> um, I am following the stitch pattern exactly though. And I didn't change the needle size at all. I am using the recommended needle size, which is a US 8 five millimeter needle. And I really like the, um, I thought maybe it would make it too loose, but it's still a really dense fabric. Um, it's mosaic knitting and so it's got this wonderful squish and thickness to it. It's lovely. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm actually on the ninth section and there's only 10 sections in the pattern. But since I'm using a, you know, fingering weight held double is about this uh, weight of a DK weight normally. So it is a thinner yarn than what the pattern recommends. And so I assume that it will turn out smaller than the recommended size, you know, the original pattern. So I'm just going to continue knitting until it is a good size. You know, I, I might even just go bigger than what the original size is because Tina really wants it to be 
um, big and cozy and easy to wrap around. I don't want it to be a struggle for her to keep it around her shoulders or anything like that. So I want to make sure it's big enough so that it's comfortable for her to wear without struggling with it. You can see this progress keeper right here is marking where I was last time I recorded. So I have been able to make more progress on this, but of course with it being thicker yarn, it is, um, it works up quicker. And this pattern is a lot easier to memorize. It's pretty mindless. Um, the slip stitches are the only thing that you really have to pay attention to, but even that you can kind of see what you're supposed to do. You know, the stitches kind of alternate. As you can see, they kind of have an alternating pattern. So it's pretty easy to tell where you're at and to just work this up without really having to think about it. Whereas of course the brioche takes a bit more concentration. But I am loving it so much. This pattern is just so fun to work up. The color change, I love seeing the two different strands that I'm holding together, how they work up, how they, how that color um, looks as it's marled together. It's so pretty. And it's really, you know, it's pretty good size so far, but I do, like I said, want to make it really big for her. So, oh, it has this beautiful I-cord edging, which I love. So yeah, I'm loving it so much. The majority of the yarn that I'm using is my own hand dyed yarn. Quite a few one of a kind skeins in here. Um, and I am not dyeing yarn anymore. If you are a new viewer, I used to dye yarn and I no longer dye yarn. So I am using a faded set, which was is called Bountiful. Um, that um, is kind of the light tan brownish color that you can see throughout here. I used it in the background in this section, two of the colors, like the lightest color and the third color. And then I've used it as the top color in this section right here, a couple of darker strands. Let's see, I have my fine gold colorway mixed in here. Um, my living colorway is mixed in here. My plenty colorway is mixed in here. Um, Reflex is in here. Vineyard is in here. But um, anyway, then I'm also using two skeins of Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the Sequoia Heather colorway and the Persimmon Heather colorway. Um, here is the Sequoia Heather. And here is the persimmon. And then I'm also using a skein of Malabrigo in the Archangel colorway. This was the original inspiration for making this shawl. I got this from Tina as well, and it didn't have any nylon in it. So um, I wanted to make her a shawl with it instead. So then I just gathered up a bunch of other colorways that kind of went with it and you know, kind of have this uh, autumnal color palette, which I love and Tina loves these colors as well. So yeah, it's working up so beautifully. I just really, really love it so much. It's so fun to work on. So relaxing and gratifying to work on. So I love it. All right, my next work in progress is a new cast on that is being held in this cute little bag that has a little red riding hood theme. I got this from an Etsy shop called My Creative Frenzy. And in here is another pair of socks for my daughter. I knit her a pair of socks for her birthday in January and she has enjoyed wearing them so much. And I asked her if she would like any more and she said, yes, if you make me more socks, I will get rid of all of my store-bought socks and I will. I want to have my whole drawer filled up with hand-knit socks. <laughs> so I was like, all right, yes. <laughs> I will make you more, no problem. So I'm super happy to do that for her. I am using some yarn that I received from a podcast viewer that was so generous and sent me a goodie package filled up with wonderful yarn and in that package was this Lang Yarns Yawul Magic Degrati and the colorway number is 5912 and it is a beautiful colorway. I just really really love it. I am knitting 
the Heel Toe do -si do Sock Pattern, again by Kay of Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And I thought that this yarn was gonna be more striped, more defined stripes, but really it's more of like a gradient fade. So I don't know that it's as effective as for this pattern. This pattern was specifically designed for self-striping yarn. I still think it's gorgeous, but it's not quite as effective to see the chevron shaping that forms with this beautiful pattern. But it's still, I still love it, of course. I This wool is, it's 75% superwash wool, virgin wool, and 25% nylon. I tried to do some color matching so that they would, you know, match up. And you can see that the cuff is beautiful. It's really well matched. But then as I worked into the leg here, you can see that this sock had a little bit more burgundy than this one. So I don't know that the colors are going to match up very well throughout the rest of the sock. We'll see how it goes, but it's okay if they're not perfectly matched. I typically always knit my socks two at a time. It's my favorite way to get both socks done at the exact same time. That way I don't have to try to remember how many rows I knit. I don't have to count anything hardly. I can just knit them and they are ex exact matches. And that is just my perfect, my preference for making socks. And then of course they're both done at the same time. So I don't have to, I don't enjoy making the second sock when I make them one at a time as much. So. Again, I'm using US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, and I am making the smallest size, which is a 56 stitch count for my daughter, which is what I made last time I made her socks, and they are fitting her so beautifully. The pair of socks that I made for her for her birthday just fit her perfectly. So I'm gonna do the exact same uh, number of rows for the foot and everything for her for these socks. Again, this one is a one by one twisted rib, and yeah, I'm just working into the pattern. Now this pattern is only a two row repeat. Super, super easy to memorize. So it's so much fun. This is the second time I've knit this pattern and it will definitely not be the last. I just really am a huge fan of Kay's sock patterns, if you can't tell. <laughs> I love them. So anyway, I love this yarn. It is going to be fading into, here's the rest of the cake, into more purples and even some black in there. So I'm excited to see how that works out. I'm really, really enjoying working with this yarn. It's actually like a single ply, I think. Yeah, it's a single ply. So I was surprised that that for that, for sock, you know, yarn, but it does have nylon in it. So hopefully they'll hold up well, even though they're single ply. I think that single ply isn't probably the hardest wearing yarn, but hopefully they'll be okay. It has a fun like halo to the yarn. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really, really fun. I love it. And the colors are just so great, aren't they? She picked this, this yarn out of my stash of sock yarn. My next work in progress is in this awesome new basket that Tina gave to me. It's pretty typical that when I go to church on Sundays, Tina has something to give to me. I keep forgetting to mention that this beautiful blanket that I have on my bed back here was crocheted by her great-grandmother, who, if you have watched for a while, may recall that I helped to finish a baby cardigan that her great-grandmother had started probably years and years ago. And anyway, um, her mother recently passed away last year and they're clearing out a lot of her things. And so she found this beautiful afghan that her great-grandmother had crocheted and asked if I would like to have it. And I love it so much. It is such a work of art. And yeah, I've enjoyed it on my bed. It's really big. So I, we have a king size bed and it um, covers our, the top of our bed nicely. So I love it so much. Anyway, um, so Tina gifted me this basket last Sunday when I went to church just cause, cause she's sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. And in here is the project that I've been working on continuing with the Make 30 for 30 make along that Natalie of Nitty Natty started in January. Um, and she's kind of very casually continuing that on throughout, 
I don't know how long she'll continue it, but the idea is that you just pick one project and work on it for 30 minutes every day to try to get some progress through it or to make progress on it. And I am choosing to work on the many scrappy blankets that I have as works in progress. And I worked on my excavation Afghan through the month of January. And then um, two weeks ago, I started working on my Hexi, my Miley Hexi blanket. And here it is. This is a free pattern by Emma of Potter and Bloom. She has a YouTube tutorial that goes through how to make this motif. And I love it so much, isn't it pretty? Now the tutorial that she has, has it calls for you to use fingering weight yarn, I believe. I am adjusting that in that I'm using DK weight. I'm using up all of my, a bunch of scraps that I have for the center colors. So I'm really, really loving how it's turning out so far. And then for the second and third rows or rounds of this motif, I'm just using a bare DK weight yarn. And I am joining them as I crochet, which is my favorite way to make pieced afghans. I am using an H five millimeter hook. This is a clover brand hook and yeah I really this is kind of a memory blanket too in that you know I've made quite a few different DK weight sweaters so these um this blue this light blue and this dark blue and this gray were colors that went into my eldest son's sweater that I made for him last year um this red was from my youngest son's sweater that I made him last year um, I have a sweater in my enriched colorway, my Hannah's Summer Braid. I made the Stone Hand Crop. No, Stone Ham Poncho. What is it called? Stone Ham Poncho that I made into a sweater. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And I used my uh, Night Colorway, my Gaze, and my Sweetness Colorway for that. Um... Let's see, the gold is from my Sophie cardigan that I just recently finished last month, I think. And, oh, and then the, um, this is from the alpaca socks that I recently made, the cabled alpaca socks, which have a very sad story. So I have already made a hole in my alpaca socks very, very sad. This is not the first time that I've tried to make nylon free socks and have pretty much had the same result. I always work a hole into the ball of my foot. So anyway, it's not the first time that this has happened, but hopefully it will be the last time. I am not planning to make any more socks with ni nylon free yarn because it just doesn't work out for me. So I think I had I was inspired to make these because Hohi Locatelli um, was making a pair. She had had a pair of uh, alpaca socks that she had had for a number of years, and she had talked about it on one of her journals here on YouTube. And she said that they felted and wore for they just were such great wearing socks. So I thought I would try it. I was a bit hesitant, and rightly so. They did felt quite a bit you can kind of see well I can see in person maybe you can't really tell on camera but I was wearing these the other night and my son go I had my feet up on our couch and my son says mom you have a hole in your sock <laughs> it's like no I did get you know I don't know how many days I wore these but I would guess I wore them maybe 10 days that's just a guess not long enough for the amount of time that I put into making them. So anyway, that was a sad um, experiment that did not work out. But I am going to, the heel is pretty well felted, so I think I will just cut off the leg and use that yarn for something else. I'll probably just put it into this blanket because I don't really like alpaca yarn 
for anything around it, it did not bother my feet at all so I was so happy about that and I don't know if it kept my feet extra warm I mean they are thicker it was a DK weight yarn um I don't know they weren't like amazingly warm they were warm but not overly warm anyway um anyway I was talking about this blanket wasn't I <laughs> So I really, really enjoy working on this. I think it's gonna be so gorgeous whenever it's done, but of course that will be years from now. But I really, really love it. So pretty. I am following a bit of a pattern. I don't know if you can see it. In that I'm, the way I'm placing my hexes. So you can see on this row, all of these hexes have two parts that are pointing up and one pointing down. And then these two rows, only one's pointing up and the two are going down. So there's a bit of a pattern there. I love it. I just love the colors in it, even though I'm just, I'm not really, you know, I'm spacing the colors out so that there's an even distribution, but I'm not being picky with what colors are going in it. It's just my leftovers, but I really like how they're all working together. So anyway, super happy with that. I am, uh, I think I am gonna move on to my, um, I'll show it to you. It's right here. I'm going to move on to my scrappy hexy blanket, I think I've called it. It's been so long since I've worked on this blanket, so I'm really excited to get back to it. Oh, isn't it lovely? But I haven't made any progress on this since I showed it last, which was months ago. So I'm excited to pick this back up again and add. I just go all the way around. That's how I work on it. I just go all the way around the circumference of it um, in order to add another row on. And again, I'm joining this as I go as well and using up the tiniest bits of scraps for each round. So I love this. This is probably my favorite scrappy blanket just because it's so, I don't know, I just love the tiny little hexes and I think it's so striking. So I'm excited to work on that. That's what I'm gonna focus on for my 30 minute a day, my Make 30 for 30 project, until I get all the way around the outside. Okay, I have one more work in progress that is a bit of a secret. I'm doing another test crochet project, um, and I'm not allowed to show off the actual design. It is a pillowcase or a pillow covering, and I've already completed the front of the pillow, which is the main design, of course, and it measures 17 and a half inches square. And I'm using fingering weight yarn. So I thought I would just show off what I am using. This design is originally designed to be, to use up scraps, which would be wonderful to do. But I decided to use some stash yarn that I've had on hand for over a year. I think I received it at Christmas time 2018. It is Koi Gu Wool. No, no, I don't get this. It says Koi Gu KPPPM. I don't know what that means. Um, the die code is P1637. I had two 50 gram skeins of this yarn. This is what I have left after making the front piece of this pillow. And anyway, I just decided to use this up and it worked really well. I'm also using some bare yarn on my gold Stellina base for the other color. And right now I am working up the back piece. And so it's just, I think supposed to be plain, you know, just a plain color, but I decided to use up the rest of this Koi Gu and just stripe every other row. So you can kind of get an idea of the pattern a little bit but I'm not going to give away anything because she wants to keep it a secret so anyway I just thought I would show that so I have made one piece that I can't show you but it it's pretty big size pillow front and this will be the back of it I'm pretty sure that my this koi goo will not last for the entirety of the back piece so once I run out of this then I'll just continue with the bare yarn um, did I mention that's gold Stellina I think I did so that's kind of got a fun added sparkle to it. And the hook that I'm using is a 
C hook 2.75 millimeter, and this is also a clover hook. I'm really enjoying using those lately. They're really comfortable to use. So that's all of the works in progress. I have quite a few. Um, anyway, I have really enjoyed making everything though. I'm really enjoying mixing up my projects. Usually I get a little overwhelmed if I have so many projects, but I'm not because I'm working on everything. I'm not leaving anything languishing. So that really helps, I think, if I can continue working on everything so that I don't forget the pattern. So anyway, I'm really enjoying everything I'm making. Um, I think that's it. I can't think of anything that's been going on. Let's see. I should think of this before I record, but I don't often think about what I want to say for what's been going on in my life. And it's really hard for me to remember what's going on in my life. <laughs> These orchids are really pretty behind me, aren't they? Oh, I love them so much, but I'm... Can you hear her? Somebody's crying downstairs. It's my youngest. I wonder what's going on. I better hurry up and finish this up. Anyway, I got these for Valentine's Day from my husband and my daughter. She picked them out and my husband bought them. Um, and I love them, but I've had orchids before and I have killed them. So I'm really nervous that these aren't going to last. But they have seven blooms on them and I love that color so much. It's so much fun to have some flowers in the winter. The weather has been a bit more mild. Most of the snow has melted here. Um, it's supposed to warm up to like 60 tomorrow, I guess, which is amazing. It's really windy today, but a little bit warmer. Anyway, oh, I saw a robin today. <gasps> I was outside getting some footage for the beginning of this episode and I heard this strange bird sound. I was like, what is that song? You know, cause we kind of, we, we like to bird watch around here. And so we kind of get used to the different birds and their songs. And I heard this one song and I was like, what is that? I don't recognize that. And so I went looking for the bird and sure enough, it was a robin already. I was shocked because I, I say that that is the first sign of spring when you see a robin redbreast here in the Midwest anyway, because we don't see them in the winter at all. So that was exciting. I'm so surprised to see it so early. Anyway, I can't think of anything else that's out of the ordinary for us. So we've been doing good. <laughs> I hope you all have been doing well as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like. I would appreciate that so much. I hope you all have a great couple of weeks ahead. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.